rainfall. And because of this reason, the forest, parts of the forest, actually flooded up to about 9 meters, to something like that. A lot of new species will migrate to this new environment to feed and to reproduce. Now, some of the species consist of fish, reptiles, and even semi aquatic animals. But right over here, we have got a few species that are featured from the Amazon flooded forest. But the first one, the first cuddly fish that you see right here is this guy over here. You see this, the big one? The rounded fish? Well, isn't that look like the piranhas? Does it look like the piranhas? You know which one? The one behind there? You see this? Well, this is what I call the vegetarian piranhas. They are not carnivorous at all. They are vegetarian. So when you see them in the Amazon River, don't worry, they are harmless. They are, their name is actually called the Paku. Paku is the actual name. Well, another fish that you see, you see this fish with a red tail with black stripe. It's a small fish. For those of you over here, it's just right up here. You see this? Well, this is the red tail Prochilidus. They are the cleaners of the river because they clean up the river by eating on the algae. But another one, ah, you see up there, right at the corner over there, the long fish, the very long fish that looks like the water. And over here, right at the corner, the right corner, well, that fish is what we call the Pirarupu. Pirarupu, also known as the Arapaima. Is it familiar? The Arapaima is one of the largest freshwater fish in the world. They can grow up to about 3 meters and weighing up to 200 kilograms. Well, this particular fish is very unique. They have air breathing organs. Their organs is like lungs, like us, lung like. Therefore, we call it the lemurine organs. Well, this fish, they have to surface out every 50 to 20 minutes to breathe, even though they are fish species. Well, and also, the indigenous people in the Amazon hunt this fish to eat. They say that it's a delicacy. And there's one more thing that they hunt them for, is for the scales. The scales are used as jewelry. And one last thing, the tongue. The indigenous people actually use the tongue of this fish as a scraping tool. You know why? Because on the tongue, there's a row of teeth. That's why it can be used as a scraping tool. Well, now let's refocus back to the very slow moving but yet gentle and graceful manatees. You know which are the manatees? You know which are the manatees? Well, manatees are also known as the sea cows. Some sailors thought that they are mermaids. So, can you spot any animal that looks like a mermaid? They look sexy, right? Big and round. <laughs> well, they're just right behind with that. You see that? They're right behind. Well, manatees are herbivorous, which means they eat lots of plants. They have to eat up to about 10% of their body weight. So over here, can you spot the biggest manatee? Can you spot? Yes, she is right behind there. Her tail is facing us. Well, that one is the biggest manatee out of the 11 over here. Her name is Eva. And Eva weighs 1.1 tons. So can you imagine how much food she needs to eat every day? About 100 grams of vegetables. So children, if you want to grow up big and strong, what do you eat? Vegetables. You need to eat vegetables, okay? Well, Eva, she is the proud mother of seven children and two grandchildren. The female manatees carry the baby for one year. And when the baby is born, what they will do is that the mother will lift the baby up to the surface to catch her first breath. 
and after which the baby will follow the mother for about two years. But right over here, do you spot two babies? We have got two babies in there, and one of them is seven months old, and the second is about three months old. Well, you can see them beating their way at the vegetables. And sometimes, they will return back to the mother to suckle milk. You see, manatees are mammals just like us. They also drink milk. And one more thing they share in common, they also need to breathe. So therefore, after staying inside the water about for about 50 to 20 minutes, they need to surface out to breathe. While they are moving, they have to breathe every four to five minutes. Well, you see, over here, you can see many different sizes of manatees. The bigger ones are the females. The smaller ones are the males. Doesn't mean that the bigger they grow, the older they get. It's not true. The smallest guy, his name is Pedro. And Pedro is 30 years old. He is the oldest among them and they can live up to about 60 to 70 years of age. Well, do you know, give me the wrong guess, who is the closest relative to the manatees? Who is their closest relative? There's one particular animal that shares the same ancestor. Any guess? Any guess? People are guessing Morris? No. Dolphins, no. Whales, no. The answer is the elephants. The elephants. They share the same ancestor. They belong to the same group that is the subarchivates. Well, for them, just like the elephants, elephants use a trunk to reach out for food, right? For the manatees, they use their snout and their flippers to gather in the vegetables into the mouth. Well, in their mouth, on each side of the jaw, there are six molars, and these are called the marching molars, because these molars need to be consistently being replaced because of the constant grinding of the vegetables. Well, they have very simple stomach, but which means they need a very long intestine. So can you make a guess how long the intestine is? For us human beings, it's about 7 to 8 meters. How about for them? How long? Anybody? How long is the intestine? Nobody? Let me tell you, it's 45 meters. That's how long the intestine is. It's 45 meters. Well, there's another thing to note for the manatees. They do not have natural predators. But why is it the numbers are going down? The reason is because of us. Human beings, we take the boats out, the fishing boats. These boats cut them while they surface up to breathe. Fishing gears clog out their intestine. We human beings hunt them down for their bones to make oceans. Human beings hunt them down for their skin to make canoes to make shoes and also to make shoes. Is it necessary for us to have all these things? Think about it. Well, for those of you who are interested to see them up closer, you can actually come up this way, go up here, turn to your right. There's two more viewing panels, one on the mid-level and one on the surface level. So you can see them face to face. Okay? Well, with that, thank you so much for giving me your time right here at the Amazon Father Forest. We wish you a great day again. Thank you and bye-bye.